Bonus effects wanted to know how you add anime speed lines into your animated sequences. Well, I have heard your request and here comes the tutorial. Stay tuned. What's up, Survivalists? It's Jay from Team WNJ here. If you're not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and hit that bell icon to make sure you stay notified whenever I upload a new video on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. If you're already subscribed, welcome back. It's good to see you again. Make sure you leave a comment so I can remember who you are. Let's try to get this video up to five likes. Now let's get it started. This is what we'll be making today. Cool, I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to anyway. Of course, Arkosh over here from Levislear is not animated properly. He just like flies in. If you were doing this for real, you'd probably make him run or something. I literally did this in five minutes. Let's start breaking down how I made it. Oh, and by the way, the characters are from my web series, Levislear. So if you haven't seen it already, go check it out. Let me know what you think. All right, so here we are in After Effects. You are going to need After Effects for this to work. To start off with, here's the base clip that we have exported from Cinema 4D. The first thing I want to do before adding anything else in is to get those speed lines in. Let's hit G on the keyboard to bring up the pen tool. With this tool, make sure the fill color is white and the stroke is set to zero. Now we can draw a tiny little triangle at the bottom of our screen. Now let's go up to Windows and Align. This will bring up the Align panel on the right hand side of your screen. Simply align this horizontally to the center. Let's twirl down the settings of our shape layer one here and go to add. Hit this little triangle and select repeater. If we look at the drop down menu here, you can see that the repeater is underneath the shape. Let's twirl down repeater and twirl down its transform settings. Let's scroll back up a little bit and set our copies up to 20 for now. And also set our rotation to 20. Now you're going to notice a bit of funkiness going on here. That's fine. All we have to do is grab the position value here and just scoot it back. That looks like it matches. We've got a bit too many copies going around, so let's turn the copies from 20 down to, say, 18. And now we have a full circle. You're going to notice that the circle doesn't line up properly in the middle, so let's fix that. Under the contents twirl down, we can find shape 1. Let's twirl that down and click on path. This will allow us to change the path of our shape. Click on one of the points and hit Control A to select all the points, and we'll just move this to the middle by clicking on one of the points and moving them. Trying to make sure that it's a perfect circle, like so. Now let's select our shape layer and press S on our keyboard. This will allow us to change the scale, and all we're gonna do is scale this up. And there we go, now I feel like these lines are a bit too thick right now. If I wanted to change those, all I have to do is scroll out, find the bottom two points, drop down that shape layer until I find the shape settings under Content Shape 1, hit that path, and then just start shrinking these points together. It's also a good idea to move these closer to the origin so they're not so far away. Make sure you give it some distance away from the main frame, this way we can move the center around. Now with the main speed lines done, we can add some movement to it. Select our shape layer and add the turbulence displace effect onto it. Instantly our lines are going to look like they're high, but not to worry. Let's set the amount down to say 12, and let's give it some animation. I'm going to make a keyframe on the first frame here on the offset value. I'm going to go to the last frame and change the up value to say 10,000. Now if we play that back, we can see that it moves very rapidly. Now for me, it would be a good time to start figuring out where I want the speed lines to start and where I want them to end. So in the beginning here, Arkosh drops down and he doesn't start running yet, not until the 12th frame where he starts going forward. At this point, I think I'd be comfortable with cutting this off here. So if I hold down Alt and the square brackets, I can actually trim that to the start right there. So it's not going to be here until it gets to there and it starts to start coming in. Where I want them to go out is right after he finishes dodging this thing. So right around there, I'll have it cut out. We play that back now, this is what it looks like. It just kind of abruptly comes in and abruptly comes out. While we only have one layer right now, and we're going to be duplicating this later on to give more speed lines, let's animate this one first. The center right now is on the center of the screen. It's not on the center of the thing that's moving. That's Arkosh. Let's hit P with our shape layer selected to drop down the position. Let's drop a keyframe on the first frame right here and move this into position just by clicking on the main speed line down here, not any other one. You have to click on the main one and scooting this over to there. Now I'm just going to move forward by a few frames and readjust it a little bit so that it matches up. Up, move forward again and to the end. Now I know for a fact that this does, doesn't line up properly because it, it probably lines up at the start a little bit. You just still gotta add like minor adjustments. Now we have something that looks like this. A lot better because it actually tracks our guy. Another thing I'm gonna do is start wiggling the scale a little bit so it starts jittering back and forth. To do this, I'm gonna hit S on our keyboard. This will bring out our scale options. I'm gonna hold down Alt and left click on the stopwatch over here. This will bring down our expressions menu. In our expressions, I'm going to type in wiggle bracket 10 comma 10 close bracket. Do not hit enter at the end, simply click off in some blank space. This will start wiggling the scale back and forth. Gives it a little bit of extra sporadicness. If you wanted to make this more intense, you can actually uh, up the numbers from 1010 to like say 2020. All right, so 10500 seems to work for me. 
All right, so now we have one set of speed lines in, but I want to add some variations. So all I'm going to do is hit Control D to duplicate the layer. Now we can twirl down the second one, go down to its contents and the shape. And all we have to do is change the shape of this one. I'm going to make this one probably a bit thinner. Let's try to find the individual points here on the shape uh, path. Sorry. Yep, there you go. Make this one tinier and I'll make this one shorter as well. Now it's gonna look like it's stacking up right now. That's fine. Let's select our shape layer two, hit R on our keyboard. That's gonna drop down rotation. And we're just gonna spin this around a little bit. Let's not put it straight in the middle. That's not gonna look very nice. Uh, how about somewhere there? And now we have two sets of anime speed lines. Now you could go in and add an extra set, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. We're still not done yet because the effects just kind of pop into existence and pop out of existence. Let's make them go in and out of frame. I'm gonna do it for the big lines first. Let's open up the contents, go to shape one and select the path, drop down to path, and we get the path timeline. Let's hit the stopwatch on the first frame. This is gonna give us a keyframe. Let's move forward by a few frames. Because this is thicker, I'm gonna say that this comes in slower than the supporting lines. So let's say this comes in after uh, one, two, three, four, five frames. On the fifth frame, I'm gonna hit this little diamond here to create another key point. I'm gonna move back to the first frame, select the main speed line and just pull it out of frame. Now if we play it back, it should shoot into frame. At the end, we don't have to redo all those keyframes. Don't worry. I'm going to select the first keyframe, hit Control C, Control V. That's going to copy the first keyframe there. I'm going to move back by five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Copy this keyframe, copy paste, and it just works. Let's do the same thing for the second one, except because this one has thinner lines, I'm going to say that this one comes in faster. So let's make a keyframe here, move forward by one, two, three frames. Make another keyframe here, go back three frames and make this go outside. Let's select this and just kind of pull that out. There we go. Go to the last frame, control C, control V, one, two, three, copy this one, uh, copy, copy, paste. And now they come in and they fade out. The last thing I want to do here is make these lines blend a bit better. I'm going to select both the speed layers and change the blend mode to overlay. Now that's all we need to do to make our anime speed lines. But if you know me, you know I'm not done yet. I want to make this extra powerful. Let's get to it. Let's first of all select our main layer down here. Hit S on our keyboard to bring up scale and change the scale to 105. This will give us a little bit of room on the outside to work with. After that's done, I'm going to find where the speed lines start kicking in. So it's around there. I'm going to hit Control Shift D to split the layer onto a different layer and cut the clip at the same time. I'm going to know where the speed lines end. So give or take around there. Uh, Control Shift D, split the clip again. On the middle clip here, this is the one we have to pay attention with. Let's hit S, drop down a scale and hit a keyframe on the first frame. I'm going to go to the end of the clip and hit another keyframe there. But somewhere around the end here, right before he dodges this blade that's coming at him, I'm going to scale up the size to say 145. Now the clip starts slowly zooming in before pulling out very quickly at the end. I'm still not satisfied. I want to add more. Let's hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotation. I'm going to set a keyframe right in the beginning and a keyframe right at the end. In the middle where he goes left over here, I want to boost the extra rotations. I'm going to tilt it over there like so. Make sure we play it back to make sure everything stays in the frame. Uh, he then goes to the right. So I'm going to roll the camera to the right here as well. Pull it really extreme like so. And now when we play it back, it has much bigger effect. I'm still not done yet. Let's select the middle layer again. Hit P on our keyboard. This is going to bring a position. We're going to hit Alt and click on the stopwatch over here. Again, we're going to type in wiggle bracket 10 comma 10. What this is trying to do is fake camera shake. So there we go. Now when the anime speed lines come in, it just jerks in and starts shaking like he's moving really quickly and he goes behind a big enderman. Now, if you guys have RSMB installed, it's a good idea to use RSMB on everything. If you guys don't know what RSMB means, RSMB stands for Real Smart Motion Blur. It's the plugin that most of us use to add motion blur to our scenes. Here's what it looks like without RSMB, and here's what it looks like with RSMB. There is a massive, massive difference, and I highly recommend getting RSMB if you don't already have it. So there you go. There's the anime speed line tutorial. I hope that was helpful for you. And if it was, there is an entire playlist right up here to enhance your animations, whether you're a beginner or advanced. If you have any more tutorials that you want to see from me, make sure you let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. With that said and done, make sure you subscribe with that bell icon enabled. Leave this video a like. Cheers.